What's up my people? Welcome back to the channel. Leave a like on this video and also subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber and click that bell icon to get notified whenever anything new is on the channel. So you know my people as usual, I have some things I'm going to share with you guys. So the first thing I'm going to get in here people are the youth who get beat up. You know what I mean? Them say he was unconscious to him get licked, people. And I see a video circulate with him friend them. I walk with him go hospital. I have to wonder, people, what kind of world we live in? Where a youth can step on the next youth, shoes and tell him sorry. And he not end up like this. But a long time them something are going, people. Man all get K-I-L-L for step on man clocks way back in the 80s, them time there. You know what I mean? You have some people who are just dark away and feel like, say, boy, if a person step on your shoes, him if get beat up or if it end badly for that person. Eh? Come on, man. We have wise up people that are vanity bridging. See? So, let me get into it, people. Boy beaten, unconscious. A St. Elizabeth family is demanding justice after their relative 14-year-old Jaim Coleman was beaten unconscious allegedly by a grade 11 student for stepping on a pair of clock shoes and had to be moved on foot by a schoolmate from B.B. Coke High School to a doctor's office about 500 meters away. The incident which happened on Thursday about 2.45 p.m. has generated widespread debate on violence in school. The incident prompt emergency meetings with school administrators, the board, police and Ministry of Education officials Thursday night and again on Friday at the Junction B School. Coleman's mother, Chantel Goldburn, is demanding that her son's aggressor face the necessary punishment from not only the school but also the law. I need justice. I need the student to get punished because I could stay anywhere and hear that my son died at the school. I need the school to deal with it. I need the law to deal with it. I need this to go to the Ministry of Education, she said outside the Mandeville Regional Hospital on friday morning her son has been admitted at hospital with a swollen face and is awaiting scan to determine the extent of his injury he is supposed to do a brain scan he did an x-ray on thursday the doctor said they see a sign of ear behind his brain so they are not really sure of anything yet until he does the scan coleman's aunt and colburn's sister tamika Olness explained the mother described her son condition when she visit him at the hospital on friday he is talking but the light is affecting his eye so he has to have it covered his whole face is swollen the eyes are shutting down black and blue and blood marks she said our news team was told that shortly after the dismissal of class on thursday coleman and another boy were among students collecting their phones when the older boy accused the younger boy of stepping on his clerk's shoes, he made a bad step, Coleman and said. The older boy is accused of pushing Coleman to the ground, beating him and stepping in his face. He fell hit his head and got knocked out and then the student was stepping in his face. It is very sad to see that you can send your kids to school and to get a phone call like that, said the aunt. She claimed the school security personnel didn't report the incident to the school administrator, resulting in the nephew being taken by his peers on foot through the busy town of Junction to seek medical attention. It is Jaim's friends who had to walk with him, pick him up and walk with him through Junction Town to bring him to a doctor, she said. She claimed that efforts to contact school officials on Thursday led to a distasteful phone call conversation between herself and a woman who she identified as a teacher at the institution. We were trying to get in touch with the school, but we got a teacher's number. We called her trying to get the principal's number 
her response was, I am not the principal, I am not the dean of discipline, how did you get my number, you are not supposed to call me, and all that, so I am thinking, you know, as a teacher, you could have dealt with the matter better, she said. You could simply tell us how you are going to get in touch with the principal, she added. Head of the St. Elizabeth Police, Acting Superintendent Coleridge Minto, said the grade 11 student was brought into the police by his mother for questioning. And Colburn said she met with the school administrators Friday morning. We went to the school and they said... They are going to call a meeting with the boys' parent. The police also went over there. They said they are going to take it from there. I have to go back to the police station, she said. The article kind of longer, but I don't go no more in that. I just have to give an update upon the youth right now because them did for move him guy Yui and I guess him reach a Yui, you know. But let me go on and look update you. See? Injured BB Cook student to be transferred from Mandeville to corporate area for brain scan. Arrangements are reportedly being made to transfer injured BB Cook High School student Jaim Coleman, 14, from the Mandeville Regional Hospital to a corporate area facility for a brain scan. Coleman was beaten unconscious, allegedly, by a grade 11 student for stepping on his clark's shoes coleman's mother chantel goldburn told her news team on saturday that following field efforts to get the scan done in mandeville health minister dr christopher tufton informed her that arrangements have been made to transfer her son to the university hospital of the west indies dr tufton in a post on x formerly twitter Confirm that support is being given. This is most tragic and painful. Makes me very sad. Myself and the Ministry of Education have been in touch with the mother of the child and the medical team at the Mandeville Regional Hospital and UHWI to give the necessary support, he said. On Friday, commanding officer, for the St. Elizabeth Division, Coleridge Minto said the grade 11 student was arrested on reasonable suspicion of assault occasioning grievous bodily harm. Other persons are being interviewed and formal charges are expected to be laid thereafter. So, people, this looks like it has got bigger than what we think. You understand? Because the youth face swell up bad. So right now the judge we are gonna preside over this case yeah, here after really you know what I mean go in our bag for that one yeah. because this youth yeah, he make a mistake you know what I mean so the judge have to really think if she are gonna mess up him life or give him a chance give him a chance meaning either give him suspended sentence or make him pay back some money or send him to prison and mash up him life. You know what I mean? So, I go see what I go go on. Yeah, so, if they go just give him a chance or, you know what I mean, mash up him life. But I feel like, say, they go give him suspended sentence and make him pay some money to the mother. You understand? That me feel say they go do still. So we are going to move on, people. So them see a nurse drop out in a two-vehicle crash in a St. Thomas. And people, the two carry them, the front part of them mash up bad. You see me? A nurse was KILL in a two-vehicle accident on the York Main Road in St. Thomas on Friday. The deceased has been identified as 29-year-old Chelsea Angus of Seaford in the parish Angus was a practical nurse at the St. Thomas Infirmary. Our news team understand that about 5.30 p.m. Angus was driving her Toyota Vitz motor car towards Morant Bay when, in the process of overtaking, the vehicle collided with a Mazda pickup traveling in the opposite direction. Angus, who suffered serious injuries, was rushed to hospital 
where she was pronounced. R.I.P. to this nurse and condolences to her family. Boy, people, one thing I have to say, you know, just take time and drive on the road. Please and thanks. Nobody ain't no ears for going away. You better you late that you no reach none at all. So, people, yesterday me did say I go give you an update on the whole um, Gabriel King mother situation where she no want to hand over the password to her phone. So, let me give you the update, you know, if you're not here by now. I'm my Issa grants police access to cell phone. The mother of M-U-R-D-E-R, nine-year-old Gabriel King, Amari Leon Issa, has granted access to her cell phone, saying so she gave the police them the password. The move comes hours after she lost her bid to prevent police from accessing the device. Mistress Issa had been ordered by the Constitutional Court to allow the police to enter the device by 4 p.m. Friday afternoon. Detectives had sought access to the device as they investigate the January 2022 MURDER of young Gabriel. Mistress Issa attorney Chuck Cameron says despite turning over access to the police, his client will appeal the ruling. He confirmed the development to our news center. Mr. Cameron says if the decision is allowed to go unchallenged, it would have serious implications for the right to privacy of information so people you see how this woman here go on she no one give the police them access to her phone and say boy her privacy and this and that make them go overseas make them go america and immigration hold on upon them and tell them to fly up them phone and give them access to it and you see how fast them fly up them phone and give the immigration access to them phone because you have to do that you know if you go through immigration you know and immigration say yo you know what i mean dry out a line and carry your question you and we are go america for this and that and way 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 make we get a look at your phone and way 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 you have to give them access to the phone after and now this woman her son get K I L L and she wait a year and out of the court after make she do it and she still want to appeal it. I say boy her privacy and this and that. People make them a go overseas and you see how fast them give them phone to immigration and fly up password and everything. A Jamaica them want to go and like say yo them bigger than the law. Yes, so me I say, and your son think them want to solve and you don't want to give them access, that means say you have something to hide. Whatever privacy you have in your phone, you will fly up the immigration, but you now fly up the authorities, them are Jamaica. Come on. So we are going to move on, people. Leave your comment in the comment section, right? Grand spend woman hospitalized after being SHOT in the head. People, Grand Spen, turn up, Virgin. A woman was SHOT in the head in Grand Spen, St. Andrew on Friday night. The incident reportedly happened in the Seaview area. The woman was taken to the hospital where she is said to be in serious condition. Reports suggest the woman was abducted prior to being SHOT. However, that has not been confirmed by the police. The Grand Spen area has been plagued by violence in recent weeks two men were k-i-l-l in a drive by s-h-o-o-t-i-n-g in the area on monday four men have since been arrested in relation to the incident the incident followed the s-h-o-t s-h-o-o-t-i-n-g dropout of david clark who is said to be the brother of dancehall entertainer m u lecky Clark, popular known as Joshi, 
Clark was S H O T and him drop out by G U N men in Grand Spain last Saturday. Another man was S H O T and injured in the incident. A 48 hour curfew was imposed in sections of the community on Wednesday. It ended on Friday morning. So, people, as the curfew ends, so the man them can up a woman. So, speedy recovery to that woman, eh? you know what I mean? I hope she pulled through. Jano, why people, Grand Spain, turn up, me not like. Jaja. So, we are going to move on, people. And a couple drop out in a Portland, them say. After a stunt in a go on pan bike and them something there. Youths and youths bike no done make yet on a take time and ride and stop them stunt riding in your bridging on a just a put on a three points at risk. Couple and bike K I L L in Portland after stunt rider riding goes wrong. <coughs> a woman drop out on the spot while her boyfriend succumbed to injuries in hospital in Portland on Friday night after they crash while the man was performing a stunt on his motorcycle along the orange bay main road she has been identified as alicia martin her boyfriend is yet to be identified the police say about 10 pm the two were traveling on a bike in the vicinity of a police station when the man engaged in a stunt he was reportedly seen riding with the front wheel of the bike in the ear so him a wheelie the man reported the last control of the bike and crashed into a palm tree resulting in his girlfriend being thrown onto the road martin was pronounced at the scene by a medical doctor while her boyfriend dropped out while undergoing treatment at hospital so people to all of the youth they want to stop the careless bridging you know what i mean on a take time and ride bike make for ride pan two wheel ride the bike pan the two wheel them you see me i say ride the bike pan the two wheel them on nobody with this stunt and this hard riding bridging bike not done make remember if you're dropping you know, up there's nothing if you take no type of earth off of you you know are you on the asphalt in a bridging see so people leave your comment and also my people may i beg on like up the video please and thanks and subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber please like up the video and click the top bell icon after you subscribe so you can get notification whenever anything new is on the channel so we are go back in a grand spin again people right because the police them are haunt grand spin you know seeing Grand Spain man charged after GUN ammunition discovered in suitcase. A 30 year old man from Odman Lane in Grand Spain was arrested and charged after a 9 mm Taurus pistol along with 12 9 mm rounds of ammunition was found inside a suitcase in a house he occupied. The discovery was made during an operation in the area on september 24 charged with unauthorized possession of a prohibited weapon and ammunition as well as possession of assorted parts of a prohibited weapon is kai williams otherwise called keenan are active his court date is being finalized so one less machine on the road people especially in a grand spin and we know what going on in a grand spin. You know what I mean? So we are going to move on, people. Vendor SHOT and she drop out at the Kingston Craft Market. She dip on the, the, the thumbnail, people. She now on yellow blows, right? The vendor who was attacked on SHOT in Kingston Craft Market as DIED. She drop out, people. She has been identified as 53 year old Aubrey Hines, former president of the Craft Market Association and resident of Bagna Close Angels, Spanish Town, St. Catherine. 
Reports from the Denham Town Police are that about 3.50 p.m. Hines was in the craft market where she sells her items when a lone G.U.N. man entered and asked for her by name. When she was identified, the man immediately opened G.U.N. F.I.R.E. in her direction. And lookers alerted lawmen who upon arrival saw Hines with what appeared to be G.U.N. SHOT wounds, she was rushed to hospital where she was pronounced. The incident has sent shockwaves among other igles who ply their trade in the area. Investigations are ongoing. And people, you see in a Kingston, people see I'm blind, you know. Me sure that man they never mass up when him go for the woman. And Nobody now go give information. You see me I say? I saw Kingston steer. See I'm blind. You see me? Most people see I'm blind because them no one go say nothing. And then them come for them. You see me? So RIP to this woman and condolences to her family. So guys Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. So, we come to the end of the video right now. So, bless up on yourself and thanks for watching. Until we do our next video.